why it is important for fathers to be at the house. I sincerely believe that only men can make boys men. I said the single most important cause by a long shot was that basically the boy crisis resides where dads do not reside. Women raise men to be weak. And it's this clip that we are going to show you that inspired us to make this video. Uh, during the holiday season and throughout the year, honestly, usually the black women in the family are the ones that hold it down. What are your thoughts on black women being the matriarchs of the family? Well, well, let's let's can we go a step further? Uh, the black women are, are the matriarchs of America. Uh, look what uh, black, black women just women did in this did election. election. So what do they mean with matriarch? This is the definition of matriarch, a powerful and usually older woman in charge of a family or the female leader of a society in which women hold power. Now for the first part of the definition, a powerful and usually older woman in charge of a family, they refer to the 64% to 70% of single parent household that are led by black women in the black community. And when it comes to the second part of the definition, the female leader of a society in which women hold power, they refer to this. Black women are nearly 60% of the voters in black communities. Maybe that's why politicians spend so much time courting them. They have been the foot soldiers of voting. When he talks about the election, he talks about black women being leaders with their voting power and their impact on the majority of women in the country during the election. So, so far, so good. However, what he says next is disturbing. So, right. you know, I would be nowhere without black women. I was raised, my father died when I was nine years old uh, of a heart attack when he was 36. And uh, my, so I was raised by my mother, my grandmother, and my grandmother's seven sisters. So I was truly raised by a coalition of black women. And I can tell you that I would not be the man that I am without them. And so I do believe that, the, that black women are the matriarch. But here's the truth. Last thing I'm gonna say, I know you gotta go. We gotta start taking care of our black women. We gotta start saying, hey, you know what, mom? Why don't you rest this holiday? We got it. You just kick back. We got to make sure that we no longer take advantage of the help, the hope and the heart of black women. And we start to give back where credit is due. We it's long overdue, but we should be doing it. Credit is given where credit is due. That Mr. Franklin turned out right. More power to him. However, this does not count for the majority of men raised by single mothers. And just because black women are the matriarchs of the family doesn't mean that they're doing a great job. This clip here is not a surprise because it's on the OWN network, Oprah Winfrey's network that is, and we all know Oprah's target audience, and we all know that Oprah Winfrey has no problems throwing men under the bus, black men in particular. Now the woman on the left, if you've been following Manosphere channels, you've probably seen her before. If not, allow us to refresh your memory. Hey. Disgruntled. <laughs> this is just the reality of it. So women, you know, we're more educated now and I think that we're furthering our education. So with that being said, we're going to hold off on the baby making. We're going to hold off until we get that great job. Really career driven. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's anything wrong with hoping that there's someone, someone either on your, on your level, level or higher than you. Miss Amaker presented the topic of marriage decline in the country because women struggle to find financially eligible bachelors. You just heard her stance about finding someone on her level or higher. And what she says in the next clip is our starting point for why women raise weak men. Right. You know, are you going to find many men out there that makes as much as you do? And my point is, so now you're going to, because we hear so much about women that are like, oh, there's nobody out there. There's no one out there. I can't find love. I'm getting too old. Now you're going to sacrifice the fact that you could find that love because the man's not making that much money mm -hmm. and you're going to date down. All yeah. right. Ooh, they're they're yeah. robbing us. I have a feeling this is going to be our morning rush. Actually. I can do bad by myself. 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 That depends on what version of bad you mean. If it's quote unquote bad in a positive sense, we wholeheartedly disagree, especially when it comes to raising boys to be men. I sincerely believe that only men can make boys men. Now don't misquote me. I didn't say that a single female parent or female teacher cannot rear or educate her child, but she need not do that by herself. But you call upon her father, a brother, an uncle, a male neighbor, a nephew, a co-worker. There needs to be some men in our children's lives. I want to explain to me how a boy is going to grow up to be a man if he's never seen any. In order to be anything, you must see it first. first, 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 first. 
Unfortunately, modern women in general have this mentality that they can do it all by themselves, not understanding the severe consequences of children being raised by single mothers. Because I want to point out to you very succinctly and very clearly why it is important for fathers to be at the house. Why it is important not to have children out of wedlock, and especially if you're not going to be involved in your child's life. Don't believe me. Listen to the stat. First stat reads, suicide. 63% of youth without a father commit suicide. Runaways. 90% of all homeless and runaway youth don't have a daddy at home. Behavioral disorders. 85% of all children that exhibit behavioral disorders don't have a daddy. High school dropouts. 71% of all high school dropouts don't have their daddy in their life. Juvenile detention rates. 70% of juveniles in state-operated institutions, they ain't got a daddy at home. Substance abuse. 75% of adolescent patients in substance abuse centers don't have a daddy. Last one, aggression. 75% of motivated by displaced anger don't have a daddy. So now that I've read you all the statistics, who in the world in their right mind will disagree that fatherlessness is the biggest plague in America when it comes to the home and it comes to the operational abilities of young children? especially in the black community. Black community. Black community. Black community. Not having a father in the house has negative consequences for boys and girls, but not having a father in the house usually has a greater impact on boys. I said the single most important cause by a long shot was that basically the boy crisis resides where dads do not reside. Um, and when boys don't have, when, when usually um, when there's one parent, um, in the game, um, and the other parent minim minimally involved or not at all involved, it's usually the mother that's the primary parent and the, the dad that's the secondary parent. And in those situations, the girls have challenges in more than, the daughters have challenges in more than 50 different areas. Um, but the boys have challenges in more than 50 different areas also, but their challenges are more intense they're more likely to commit suicide than the, than the girls are by the, by the data that you just gave. They're more likely to move into depression when you, mem when you measure depression um, by male standards, which is almost completely unheard of, as opposed to just the female measures of depression. Almost all of our measures of depression are female measures. The boys are much more likely to become addicted to video games. Um, girls and boys both play video games. The video games are very healthy at a, at a, at a reasonable proportional amount of level to the rest of life. Um, but it, when it comes to addiction to video games, boys are far more likely to be addicted to video games than, than girls are. Um, boys are far more likely to be addicted to drugs, to alcohol. Um, they, their depression leads them to feeling that they're, they're worthless and they become ashamed of themselves and they fear that they're going to be rejected by girls. So they're much more likely to turn to pornography because pornography is basically access to a variety of attractive women without fear of rejection at a price they can afford. Um, and so guys, as they as they don't do as well in school, uh, they don't feel as admired by girls. Girls tend to date winners, not losers. And so they feel that they're a loser and that they they fear that, that they can't risk a rejection because they know that the, the girls they're most attracted to are dating the quarterbacks or the student body president or some of the guy that's really sharp um, and um, on the basketball team, et cetera. And so they start um, fearing, um, becoming interested becoming withdrawn, becoming rebellious, becoming um, um, very coercive to their parents, and they feel badly about themselves, and that leads them into depression, into suicide, into drinking, into drugs, into death from opioid overdoses, and into addiction to pornography. Boys and girls are different, and therefore women lack understanding of boys' behavior, leading to difficulties in inspiring them, motivating them, keeping them motivated and seeing their behavior as toxic will limit their growth and affect their self-esteem. And since the majority of teachers are women, these problems continue outside the home. Because, for example, my son goes to kindergarten, not kindergarten, first grade now, 
he's in school. In four weeks that he was already in school, last week he tells me, Mom, you know what I've noticed? All the teachers like girls. They don't like boys. I say, why you feel this way? He said, I don't know. They just constantly tell boys, don't do this and don't do this, don't do this and don't do that. <laughs> and believe it or not, they're already suppressing by doing that their self-esteem. So by the time the boys are men, they already have such a strong reaction to criticism that they block. Their defense mechanism goes so high, they're like, whoa. They don't hear you, they shut down, they're in a defense mode, and they literally, you, you talk, you talk, you talk, and they're like, nothing, nothing. <laughs> and so the only way to really inspire a man, anybody else, you can't put boys and girls in the same box because they're not the same and men are the first ones to tell you that. Let's take a look at some of the differences between boys and girls in the classroom. Of course we find the boys are more aggressive, are more athletically inclined, have a shorter attention span, a slower maturation rate, as you said are less cooperative, are larger than the girls, influenced more by their peer group, more advanced gross motor than fine motor, not as neat as girls, are louder than girls, like wearing hats on their heads, have a different walk, have a larger ego. All of the things that Dr. Kunjufu mentioned proves why women struggle to raise men and why it's men that raise men. Before you know it, your child will be pumped full of unnecessary medication because the teacher can't handle him. Women are generally not interested in the things guys are interested in. These boys are not listened to and they are neglected. They are not loved. And this attitude of quote unquote, I can do bad by myself is keeping these boys from having the essential role models they need to become men. When I first started the Cave of Adullam, um, there was a plethora of boot camp programs and it was all discipline driven and they were failing at alarming rate. And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. You think of martial arts, you think of only discipline. And so when I started implementing the training, I'm like, wait a minute, this isn't working. And I quickly discovered that our boys didn't need more discipline. They needed to be loved. And so once I was able to show them what it feels like, what it looks like to be loved by a strong man, to be guided by someone you can trust. Man, I had a group of kids who were, at least six of them, were um, predicted to not graduate from the eighth grade. All of them graduated. Zeus! Ah! Zeus! Ah! Zeus! Ah! Zeus! Ah! That's what this is about. Good. Let's get to that. Why are you crying? That's what this is about, son. It's okay to cry. We cry as men. Why are you crying, son? When you look at Jason Wilson's videos, where some of the boys cry during training, it highlights an important aspect of parenting. This is training. However, boys have the tendency to engage in rough and tumble play. And I quote, Playful aggression teaches boys how to get along with one another, how to make and play within a rule structure and how to actually recognize the difference between playful and harmful behavior, end quote, Dr. Michael Nagel. Women generally don't engage in rough and tumble play. How can you do bad by yourself when you do not have what it takes to do bad by yourself? It's not a coincidence that women have this mindset. Check this out. The main flip was the option of developed nations that didn't have Got to it. worry about survival. The second flip was the government became a substitute husband when it started to make um, uh, laws saying that if a woman uh, didn't have a man that she was living with or was not married to a man, uh, that she could get uh, money from the government. Um, and so the government became a substitute husband. And this was institutionalized through many, many programs like women, infants and children, which makes it clear that it's not men, infants and children. It's not couples, infants and children. It's not infants whose, whose parents don't make enough money. Uh, so particularly in um, inner city communities where, that were poor, oftentimes, and particularly in African-American black communities, uh, there was oftentimes the, the, the black male uh, was not making um, a lot of money. And in those cases, when he wasn't, um, the woman and the black male, um, both the, usually a black woman and a black male, man calculated that there was um, a, 
an inadequate amount of money that was coming from the father to support the children effectively. So she um, made sure that the father did not live with her. And so then, um, so she could get the money from the government. Um, and that money came in multiple forms, but not just through the women, infants and children forms. And, um, and so the woman felt that the best way to protect her children uh, was to not have the father around. But it turned out and, uh, that, that that was the worst way to protect her children because um, the children without, children without a dad are most vulnerable. Just because you are the matriarchs of the family doesn't mean you're doing a great job raising your family. Just because your children have a roof on top of their heads and eat every day doesn't make you a good parent. Just because you have a college degree and make a lot of money doesn't make you a good mother or girlfriend. We must first of all become aware. I believe the first way to solve any problem is to know the problem exists, to study. We have got to study more. And then we, especially women, have got to admit that boys need role models, especially male role models. And after we admit that, then we need to identify some male role models that will play that kind of position with our boys. And please don't lie to me and say you don't know him. In other words, on your block, in your extended family, where you work at, please don't say you don't know at least one positive black man. In other words, just because the biological father is not there, does not mean there's not some other black men available. 